Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at how a transistor works as an automatic switch that is affected by heat or by light. First, let's look at the basics of a transistor circuit. This is what a transistor circuit looks like. A transistor circuit itself is actually made up of two different circuits and that is the base circuit and the collector circuit. The names of these circuits are due to the legs of the transformer. This leg is known as the collector, this is the base, and this is the emitter. The emitter emits the majority charge carrier from the emitter to the collector. In this case, this would be electrons. The emitter actually emits electrons to the collector, and therefore, they are named emitter and collector. The base controls the flow of the majority charge carriers between the emitter and the collector. This transistor is an NPN transistor. It is made up of one P-type semiconductor that is between two N-type semiconductors. And therefore, we have two PN junctions here. Let's check the connection to the terminals of the power source. If we look at the collector circuit, this is the positive and this is the negative terminal. And the collector is connected to the positive terminal. The emitter is connected to the negative terminal. If we look at the base circuit, the base is connected to the positive terminal because the power is going to come from here. So this is the positive terminal. And therefore, if we notice here, if the N-type semiconductor is connected to the positive terminal, this is a reverse bias connection. Whereas, if we look at the base emitter junction, in this case, the P-type semiconductor is connected to the positive terminal and the N-type semiconductor is connected to the negative terminal. And therefore, this is a forward bias arrangement. So what does this mean? This means that even though the collector circuit is connected to a power source, current cannot flow in the collector circuit. Whereas in the base circuit, if we have a large enough potential difference to overcome the junction potential, this PN junction here at the base emitter junction, then current can flow through the circuit. The next thing to note is the potential divider. A potential divider is simply two components that are connected in series with each other and to the power source. If we look at this, the power source is connected to these two components in series and these are two different types of resistors. The resistor at the bottom, let's call this R1. R1 is just a standard resistor whereas if we look at this component here, this is actually known as a thermistor. A thermistor is actually a special resistor whose resistance depends on the temperature. When the temperature is high, the resistance of the thermistor is going to drop. Let's label this as R2. So when the temperature is high, R2 will drop. Whereas when the temperature is low, the resistance of the thermistor will be very high. Let's see what happens when the temperature is high. When the temperature is high, the resistance of the thermistor is going to be very low. By comparison, resistance of resistor R1 is going to be very high. Therefore, in a potential divider setup, the formula for the potential difference across R1, let's call this V1, this potential difference will be equals to the resistance of R1 over the combined resistance R1 plus R2 in the potential divider multiplied by the voltage of the power source. And therefore, if the resistance of R1 is high compared to R2, relative to R2, then the potential difference across this resistor will be high as well. This is exactly what is happening in this scenario. When R2 drops because the temperature is high, relatively, R1's value is much higher than R2. And because of this, it follows that the potential difference across R1 will be very high as well. And this would mean the potential difference across the base circuit is high as well. And now we have enough potential difference to overcome the junction potential here of the base emitter junction. And therefore, current can flow in the base circuit. And the current that flows in the base circuit is known as the base current. When current is able to flow in the base circuit, what is actually happening in terms of electrons is electrons are now able to flow from the emitter to the base in this direction. And as electrons flow through the semiconductor, what's going to happen is there are going to be extra electrons, excess electrons that are going to be attracted to the positive terminal of the power source this way. And so as long as there is base current, 
the collector will have current flowing through as well and therefore there will be current flowing in the collector circuit this current that flows in the collector circuit is known as collector current so it follows that if there is current in the base circuit we say that the transistor is turned on when the transistor is turned on then there is current in the collector circuit as well and in this scenario since there is current in the collector circuit this bulb is going to light up this can be any other component as well we could replace the bulb with an alarm therefore when it is hot this alarm is going to ring so what happens when it is cold when it is cold the resistance of the thermistor is going to be very high therefore r2 will be very high relative to r1 and therefore most of the potential difference from the power source is going to be distributed to this thermistor across this thermistor let's call it v2 and therefore v1 is going to be low another way to look at it is r1 is much smaller compared to r2 therefore the potential difference across r1 v1 will be very small as well this potential difference is not enough to overcome the junction potential and therefore there will be no base current. If there is no base current, we say that the transistor is not turned on. And when the transistor is not turned on, then there cannot be collector current as well. And without collector current, the bulb does not light up. Whatever electrical component that we connect to the collector circuit will not function. So we can see from here, when it is hot, the bulb lights up. When it is cold, the bulb does not light up. We don't have any light. This is how it functions as an automatic heat switch. By the way guys, if you're liking what you're seeing so far, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Thank you very much for doing that. It really does help. Now let's get on to how the transistor works as a light switch. We have a very similar setup. Look at this setup. Once again, we have our base circuit and the collector circuit. We have the same connection, positive terminal and negative terminal, positive and negative, positive terminal. It is still collector base and emitter and this is still an NPN transistor and therefore the base emitter is still forward bias the base collector junction is reverse bias once again current cannot flow in the collector circuit unless there is current in the base circuit as you will notice we have a special component here this is known as the light dependent resistor a light dependent resistor literally has a resistance that depends on the intensity of light. When it is bright, the resistance of the light dependent resistor, also called the LDR, when it is bright, then the resistance of the LDR will drop. Let's call this R1. When it is dark, when there is no light, the resistance of the LDR will be very high. Let's start with what if it was bright. If the environment was bright, the resistance of the LDR will drop. And just like earlier, we have a potential divider. The power source is connected to this resistor and the LDR in series. And therefore, let's call this R2. When the resistance of the LDR drops due to brightness, the voltage across the LDR, let's call this V1, will drop as well. So when R1 drops, V1 drops. When V1 drops, it is not enough to overcome the junction potential here. So what happens is there is no base current when there is no base current the transistor is not turned on and when the transistor is not turned on there is no collector current current will not flow in the collector circuit the electrical component will not work in our case the light bulb does not light up what happens when it is dark instead if it is dark what's going to happen is the resistance of the LDR is going to increase when it is dark the resistance of LDR greatly increases therefore most of the potential difference from the power source is going to be distributed to R1 when LDR increases potential difference across the LDR will be high as well this means that there will be a large enough potential difference in the base circuit to drive a current to overcome the potential difference and there will be base current and when there is base current the transistor is said to be turned on when the transistor is turned on there will be current flowing in the collector circuit and if there is current flowing in the collector circuit whatever electrical component we connect 
in the collector circuit will turn on as well. And so, as we can see here, when it is dark, the light will automatically come on. Whereas when it is bright, the light does not come on. This is how the transistor acts as an automatic light switch. That's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one a week. See you guys in the next video.